Why does common list make sense for web development? You are working on a web project and you are facing a complex challenge that demands more than just the use of toolkit. You may wonder, does it make sense to use common list? Today we present when the answer to this question may be yes. Modern web development is made of highly interactive user interface. Common list cannot compete with this market. Front-end developers are unlikely to study it and there aren't simple ways to interact with modern need in user interface. If one wants a framework to do full stack development out of the box, common list is not the right tool. It gives you all you need to build it, but backend developers are not willing to write all this boilerplate. The fact is that in many websites the business logic that is the problem to solve, is simple. They basically just offer a crude interface, that is create, read, update and delete data from a database. Nowadays, there are many frameworks that make this kind of work easier. Moreover, not many people know how to configure SBCL and are willing to set it up on a machine. Nowadays, microservices is a word that is spoken by everyone. Defining a microservice is not straightforward. In simple terms, we could say that it is a web service which does just one thing. What constitutes this one thing varies greatly. Nevertheless, a microservice is responsible for either front-end or back-end, but not both. If we talk about back-end, it offers a web API. GraphQL, REST, ZRPG, they are all good. One is just to choose the one it prefers. Thus, as soon as we meet a problem which makes sense on its own and the business logic is more extensive than just a crude on the DB, we can think about common list. We still have the problem of the deployment. How do we persuade someone to install SPCL? We don't have to. Microservices are usually shipped inside containers. A container put together a piece of software and all its dependencies. Once a container has been created, whoever will use it doesn't care about its content, as long as it works. Inside there could be anything, even SPCL. A common requirement for a container is to be quick to start and stop, such that the orchestrator can start or stop based on demand. Common Lisp can also ease this requirement using the fact that it is image-based. We can load all the symbols required by our piece of software and then dump the memory to disk. We create a common Lisp image. As soon as we want to start our piece of software, we have just to start the SBCL and load the image. The most used container runtime is Docker. We can create a container as described previously using a multi-stage Docker image. We will see how to do it. So, we have a problem which involves complex symbolic manipulation, extensive data processing, and may benefits from Lisp strong support for macros and dynamic typing. Or more easily, the business logic is not trivial. We choose the interface with the outside world. REST is a common choice. It's simple and widely known. We package everything in a container. Nobody has to know there is Lisp inside. The users are only aware that they can start it quickly and query it using the HTTP protocol. We have already met the service that builds CLU expression from HTML in a previous video. Today we see how to deploy it in Docker. I won't deepen inside the details of the code. What is important is that this is a web service built with ancient tooth. We define a variable server but we don't start it immediately. In the end, we have a function main which starts it. Moreover, it makes the main thread sleep. Otherwise, the program would be killed. Then let's start with the Docker image. We have a Docker file and we start from the SBCL Alpine image. We copy the content of the current directory inside the root common list. We chose this path because it is recognized by ASDF. We change the current working directory. This is an alpine image, so it is really lightweight. 
we have to start by loading quick lisp i also copied the quick list dot list file in the current directory so it was copied inside the container by the copy command and then this is the most interesting part we start by loading all the dependencies of our project inside the current image then we load the actual code in particular here we have the main function and then we also run this command which is specific for SBCL. What it does is to dump the memory to disk and create an executable that will run the main function when it is executed. At the end of those step, we have a file named core inside this image that contains our web service. We don't need quick lift anymore because we have already loaded the all the dependencies so we start from scratch with a new image we change the user from root to app this is a common security practice when creating a docker image and finally we copy from the previous image the core file in the current image in the end we set the command or better the entry point of the current image to running SBCL with the core image, the file core. Let's try to run it. We have built the image and now we run it. If we open the browser, we can see that it works and the terminal shows the current request. In this video, we've shown that Common Lisp has its role inside modern web development, even if it doesn't provide some fancy UI framework. If the problem is simple, maybe Common Lisp may not be the perfect language, even if it would serve this role. Nevertheless, as soon as the problem becomes more complex, and we need a microservice that requires a custom design, we could consider using Common Lisp.